Class, I apologize. My video just ended abruptly, so I'm going to continue with number seven right here. Direction would be none, <clears throat> and the strength would be weak, okay? Or you can even say very weak, right? So that's the D, F, and S part of FUDs. Let's move on. So let's talk about correlation now. Last thing before we do another example, correlation. Let me give you a page number, page 149, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, okay. So take a look at the definition on, on the bottom of page 149. We use the letter R to define what we call the correlation coefficient, okay? Now we are gonna rely on our calculators to do this, but if you wanna do, if you wanna learn how to do it by hand, um, take a look at the green box on page 149 at the very top. We're just gonna, and it's totally fine, to stick with your calculator, okay? So this measures the strength, okay? So when you think about FUDs, remember the FUDs, the S, this part right here, okay? Strength of the linear association between two quantitative variables. So key things again, quantitative, there are two of them, and linear, okay? I cannot stress this enough. So when you think about form, you could have an association that looks something like, like this, that's curved, right? And that's a very, very strong association. However, your correlation is going to be weak because it's not linear. We're looking for things that are of a line. Okay, a straight line. All right, so there's some properties that we need to talk about. And this is listed on page 152, I believe, on the bottom. So this R right here, okay, is going to be between negative 1 and 1. Okay, it's not going to go uh, less than negative 1. It's not going to go beyond 1. Negative 1 represents strong okay and here this is these are super strong these are going to be perfect lines kind of like this okay this is going to be negative it's going to be positive okay also please remember r does not have any units it's not like percent or anything like that you just it's just a value okay so think about this way negative one to zero to positive one, okay? So the zero right here would be weak, okay? Or no association. Yeah, zero would be no association, actually. Okay. We'll say anything from like point 0.7, point, uh, these are just estimates, okay? There, there's, there's no like clear value that's gonna define what's what. Anything at or above 0.7 for your uh, your correlation, we would call that strong, okay? We would call this moderate. We would call this weak. Same thing over here. 0.7, I would say like maybe, I don't know, 0.3. It's negative. So we would call this strong, moderate, weak. Okay, so think about it that way. And I think this will make more sense when we, once we do an example. So I wanna go to page 145, get your calculators ready. How to make scatter plot on your TI or whatever calculator you have. 145, okay. So we're just gonna follow the directions. I'm gonna do the example that's in your textbook, okay? 
So first thing we need to set up our lists. Okay, so do you guys remember how to go to your list? You go stat, edit, okay? And I'm just gonna clear my L1, just so I have a, a blank slate right now. Remember, when you clear something, do not hit delete, hit clear. If you accidentally delete it, go to stat, or actually, I'm, let me do that. Oops, I'm just gonna ignore my teacher and hit clear, delete. Oh, my L1 is gone. Hey, I still don't listen. Oh, I did it again. Oh, well, I still don't understand because my prefrontal cortex is not uh, fully formed. I just deleted those. Great. Go back to edit number five, setup editor, and hit enter. When it says done, they just gave you a second chance in life. So what we're gonna do here is we are gonna actually name certain lists, okay? So what you're gonna to go to, you're gonna go up to L1 and go all the way to the right to get to a blank list. After L6, it should be blank. I'm gonna type in YR, you're gonna hit alpha and then find the Y. Oops. Oh, it was already set to, okay. Type the Y and then the R. R is my, I don't know my alphabet. Oh, the X times. Okay, there you go. Sorry. Maybe you follow the, the directions of the textbook. Okay. So I have year. I'm actually going to clear that. And then I'm going to put in another one for, I'm going to type in T U I T. So T U I T. If something appears, this must be because your previous calculator had the list in there, like whoever used your calculator before. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in those numbers, there should be 10 years. Okay. Mm, oh, I'm supposed to start from zero. I'm sorry, I messed up. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Okay. So I just put in those values that are listed on there. If you're confused right now, we are on this part right here of your textbook. In the year column, go zero through 10. In the Y column, I mean the tuition column, put in those values right there. All right. So now to make our scatter plot, uh, this is actually on the next page. You're gonna second stat plot, okay? So you should have one graph turned on. Before I proceed at all, I'm gonna go to y equals, I wanna make sure my y equals is blank. Right? Remember sometimes we have something written in here and that's gonna, that could, that could affect your graph. So let me erase those. Wait, I did not erase that. All right, now it's clear. Second stat plot, on. I had it set as box plots from two chapters ago, but this time I'm gonna change it to the scatter plot, which would be the first option. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down. My my X list is gonna be the one that says YR. So I could type in YR, or I can go to, see it says list right above the word stat on your calculator, go to second, list. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna look for YR. YR, there it is, I'm gonna hit enter. And then here, again, I can type in T-U-I-T for tuition, or I can go second, list, Go here. So let me pause, let you catch up. All right. Choose whatever mark you want. And then I'm going to go to graph. I'm going to go to graph. Oh my gosh, so embarrassing. Oh, I know what I need to do. Class, do you remember what you need to do? Go to zoom nine. And now you'll see your scatter plot. Okay. How would you describe that with FUDs? Definitely positive, right? Positive, linear. Um, I don't see any outliers, anything like that, and no unusual features. Uh, it's linear, positive. The strength, I would say it's pretty strong, okay? So congratulations, you made your first scatter plot. Now let's actually calculate uh, your R, okay? Before you do that, before you calculate your R, I want all of us to do this step on page 151. Okay. So now, we finish this one, check. Let's go to page 151, okay? 
So on page 151, what we need to do is there's an option, there's a, there's a, there's a, what do you call it? A, a function we need to turn on before we actually get our R. So you're gonna go to second and then catalog is a zero. Okay, this might already be turned on for you, but let's just check it. You're gonna scroll all the way down to diagnostic on. Okay, it's in alphabetical order, so you'll be here. So there's an on and off. So I'm gonna hit enter and hit enter again. So now when you see done, you're done, okay? So you don't know what happened right now, but it, it should, it should, your R should show up now. So now on the bottom of page 151, um, I want you to follow those directions for us to get our R, okay? Class, what would you predict the R is for this one? Okay, I predict, I guesstimate like 0 0.9, 0 0.90, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down. I'll bet you some, I'll bet you some Foucault bucks, okay? Mr. Foucault's guess. So R equals 0 0.90, it has to be positive, right? The positive association. Let's see what the calculator says. That says actual, by the way. Okay, so we're gonna go to stat. You're gonna go to uh, calc. Okay, stat, calc on the bottom, page 151. And you're gonna go to the eighth option, okay, where it says len reg A plus BX. Now, a lot of students, or an error students make is they go to the fourth option. Look at number four and number eight. The only difference is that where the X, right, is placed, but we wanna to go to the eighth one. So hit enter, and then again, it's gonna ask you what lists you're using. I wanna make sure I identify by choosing second stat or list. I'm gonna to go to my YR. And then for my Y list, I'm gonna to go to tuition. Okay, frequency list leave blank, store a regression equation. What this means is do I want the line to actually show up in, um, in my graph, okay? You can leave this blank, you don't need this for R, but since I wanna see this on my graph, actually, no. Let me say this for a second. Go to calculate, and then do you see your R show up? Okay, there's an R squared and R. Don't worry about R squared yet, that'll be next time, okay? So your R actually is 0 0.993. I was actually you know, off, right? It's, that's, that's very strong, right? Because one would be perfectly linear. 1.00 would be perfectly linear. And that's just, that's, that's, that's slightly off from that, right? Okay, so let me just go back to my graph. Looks like this, right? Say you're not sure, you wanna see how straight of a line this is. I'm gonna go back here, stat, calc, back to my eighth option. And I, this time I want the line to show up. So in store regression equation, I'm gonna to go to, is it second VARS? VARS, okay, sorry, go to VARS, and then go to option number one, function. So let me start over. Calc eight. So here, go to VARS, then go to Y vars, go to function, and you wanna choose which line to put it in. I'm gonna put it in Y1, okay? So I'm gonna hit enter, and Y1 should show up. I'm gonna go to calculate, okay? So now this time, when I go to Y equals right here, the equation is actually saved for me right here, okay? And if I look at my graph, <gasps> there's my line. Ta-da, okay, that's a straight line. That's my uh, linear regression line, um, which we'll talk about, I think, uh, next chapter and two chapters from now. Okay, our line of best fit. You may have heard that before. All right, class. There you go. One more thing I wanted to quickly talk to you guys about is about time. Guys, entertain me for a second, okay? Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. So, class, you guys know how many hours we have in a day? 25, right? Just kidding. So you have 24 hours. Okay, so we have 24. So we all start the day with 24 hours. Okay, does anyone start with more or less? I don't think so. So when you have your 24 hours, and then from here, let's take off. I want you to subtract how many hours you sleep, okay, on average. You all should be sleeping seven to nine hours. So I'm gonna put eight, okay? So for sleep, 
I'm gonna subtract eight. So I'm now left with 16 hours of the day, okay? Um, what else do we need to do other than sleep? We definitely need to eat, right? So for eating, I'm gonna subtract, uh, I would say one and a half hours, okay? So now I'm left with 14.5 hours in a day. Um, I definitely need to take a shower. Okay, boys, you should shower, okay? Shower, brushing teeth, uh, going potty, going number one, number two, and any other numbers, right? So um, I don't know how long that takes, but I'm just gonna say one hour. Again, can you choose your numbers? Like if it takes you longer, you, if you spend more time eating than one and a half hours, then please change that number, okay, or less. So now, so this is my, I'll just call it hygiene. Okay, brushing teeth and all that stuff. Did I spell hygiene right? I don't know if I did, but pretend I did spell it correctly. So now I'm left with 13 and a half hours, right? Okay, so now I gotta go to school. Um, gosh, how many hours do I go to school? I don't even know, I don't even go to school anymore. Uh, 8.30 to three, what is 8.30 to three? Six and a half hours, right? If I did the math correctly. So I'm gonna subtract six and a half hours. So now I'm left with seven hours in the day. Um, well, when school ends, I still have homework to do, right? Or studying. So let's say on average I spend two hours on homework, okay? So now I'm left with five hours in the day. Um, what else do I have to do? Uh, college apps right now, super busy college apps, right? Maybe on average I spend like two hours or maybe an hour, let's just say an hour. Okay, so college stuff, I only have four hours. Um, I think I need to, I better exercise, right? So I'm gonna subtract um, an hour from exercise. Okay, now I'm left with three hours in the day. Wow, these three hours, I could do so much with these three hours, right? But you guys know, you got some of you work, right? Some of you have chores, right? Some of you, uh, Gosh, um, you know, you need to have some fun, whatever that fun is, right? Um, maybe you did not get enough fun from school. Uh, maybe that's like your Among Us time or your whatever time, your walking the dog time, right? So if we're left with three hours in the day, we better, we better use those three hours very well, right? Most of these things are fixed. Like we all gotta sleep, we all gotta eat, we all gotta go, go take a shower, we all gotta go to school, right? but we all got to exercise but these three hours of discretionary time that that's like that's what's so important you know how are you going to use that time class and i beg you don't cut out the sleep okay prefrontal cortex or we got to let that develop we need sleep i just made that up i don't know if your cortex develops while sleeping but it sounds pretty good uh eating is important hygiene oh yeah super important okay so just think about that for your time you know manage your time well see you tuesday